Now we move on to the assassination of Mr. Usman Korosise, who was finance minister for the AFPRC. Tell us what you know about that. Yes, sir. Uh, the last time I saw Korosise alive was at the airport when we went to see of Jammeh. Uh, after we uh, dispersed from the airport, I went home, and the following day, I believe uh, it must have been a weekend, so my routine would have been to go to the stadium in the morning to play football. It was later on in the morning, upon my return, that I received a call from the Secretary General, uh, Alaji Mustafa Wada. And he had told me that we had lost the uh, finance minister, a colleague, uh, uh, Usman Korosise. Please proceed. Yes, sir. Um, subsequent to that, um, we discussed uh, that uh, a thorough investigation uh, has to be conducted, um, and we attended the burial. Uh, who discussed the issue of the investigation? Myself and the Secretary General at the time. And uh, tell us what happened after you attended the burial? Well, when we attended uh, uh, the burial, um, of course, I mean, there were a little bit of hostility uh, at, uh, I mean, at the funeral. Uh, but uh, subsequent to that, yes, sir. Uh, do you know why there was that hostility? Yes, sir. Um, I believe uh, the, uh, the death of uh, the late finance minister was blamed on the military. We were being blamed for the death. And it has nothing to do with party politics, if, if, isn't that the case? Well, you see, uh, Dipakunda at the time was a stronghold of the PPP. So generally, you know, we we were uh, we knew that it was uh, not a territory that uh, was going to be friendly the, the entire gambia was a ppp stronghold so the pakunda was not in isolation so do you would you agree that really party politics had nothing to do with that it was all about the perception the belief that it was the soldiers who killed Mr. Korosise? So, is that uh, the whole of the Cambia was not the PPP stronghold? The PPP did not constituency throughout this country. Uh, the NCP used to win a number of seats. So, as that of 1994, if you look at the results of the 1992 elections, it was basically a landslide uh, for the for, for, for the PPP. What I am trying to say is that the, the attack, the animosity that was displayed towards you was not based on party politics. Rather, it was based on the first point that you made, the feeling by the people that Mr. Sise was assassinated by members of the AFDRC. So I was there, and I can only tell you the perception that I had. I agree that in part was because they believed that uh, Mr. Sise was killed by the military. In part too, because it was a PPP stronghold that we had not yet penetrated uh, in other areas we had. We had managed to make inroads and then make some, uh, some uh, change some, uh, some minds, but not yet at that time in Dipakunda. So in part, yes it was due to politics. In part, yes, it was due to the fact that they believed that he was killed by the military. Uh, so proceed with your narration, as your narrative as to what happened. Uh, you received information uh, that uh, you have lost the finance minister. Yes, sir. And uh, then you went to the funeral. Yes, sir. How soon after the information you received uh, did they hold the funeral? I cannot remember exactly uh, how, how long it was, but it was not long. Uh, do you recall the day 
on which you received the information that the finance minister was lost? It must have been the very same day that he died. It was the very same day that he died. Uh, we would come back to that. Uh, would we say a Saturday? Uh, well, what date did he die? If we know the date, then we can know the day. Well, uh, the event started on the night of the 23rd of June. And that was? In 1995. Exactly. So it's difficult to, I mean, to remember whether it was a Saturday or a Sunday, a Friday or a Saturday. But you know the day you would normally go to play football, as you said, you would Like I said, do. the weekend, Saturday, Sunday. So the following day, being uh, on a weekend, whether it was Saturday or Sunday, I know that, uh, uh, I mean, I would have been at the stadium. Okay, uh, we would come back to all that. Yes, sir. Uh, so this, this would have been on a Friday yes, sir. night. Uh, that was the day the president traveled. Yes, sir. Uh, so after you received this information, do, do you know whether the burial occurred on that same Saturday or it occurred on the next day? I know there was uh, a post-mortem that was uh, conducted. Uh, I am not sure whether the body was released to them exactly that day, but what I do know is that I was at the burial. And uh, what happened after the burial? Well, after the burial, uh, I believe uh, an investigation was uh, conducted and the report was handed over to President Janme. Did you see the report? No, sir, I did not receive or see the report myself. Who conducted the investigations? Uh, I understand that the Secretary General had instructed the police to conduct uh, an investigation. Uh, Mr. Sirate? Yes, sir. <coughs> Would it surprise you to note that uh, we have heard from the top officials in the police, and all of them confirmed that there was no investigations? What do you say to that? Well, uh, I believe that there must have been an investigation. Uh, we will come, we will come yes, back sir. to yes, all sir. that. We will yes, come back to all that. Why was Mr. Korosise assassinated? Well, uh, to the best of my knowledge, uh, it had involved some money from Libya that was being taken to the Casamas rebels. Proceed, please. Yes, sir. Um, and how I got to know about this, um, we were in uh, President Jame's office, um, few, well, I cannot remember exactly how long before, uh, it was not too long within the span of two weeks, I guess, and Jame had, in fact it was myself, there was uh, the former DG of NIA Sambaba, and there was uh, Usman Korosise. Uh, we were not there for uh, this purpose. Uh, we were there for something else. Once that finished and the three, and the three of us stayed behind, uh, Jamme uh, had been complaining about the border closure with Senegal. Which three stayed behind? No, myself, uh, DG, and Usman Korosise. Proceed, please. Yes, sir. Uh, he had been complaining about uh, the intermittent border closure by the Senegalese. And uh, he said, in fact, uh, it's good. We have some good news because uh, Libya have, uh, the Libyan authorities have sent some money for the Casamas rebels and for the rebels just across the border from Casamas uh, in Guinea-Bissau. There was a group of rebels along that, along that stretch. Now, uh, DG and I had told uh, his first quick reaction was, sir, you, you need to use diplomatic means uh, to solve uh, this, this issue. And uh, I agreed. Now, Koro was definitely in support of Jamme and gave him 
an idea of uh, how to get back at, uh, at, at Senegal. And what his suggestion was, that we move the, ferry from, uh, the ferries from uh, Bamba Tenda, Yili Tenda, uh, and ground them uh, with the guys that they are under, um, uh, sorry, undergoing maintenance, and take the ferry from Bao Bolong, that was before the bridge was built, and uh, station it uh, at the Transgambia Highway. Because of its small nature, it would not be able to cross the trucks like uh, the, uh, the two ferries that were, that were there, therefore leading uh, to uh, a bottleneck. Uh, the trucks from Senegal would not be able to cross. And uh, Jamme jumped to that idea and gave instruction that it be carried out. And this exactly was, was actually carried out. Now. Um, after the death of Korosise, yes, sir. Just a moment. Yes, sir. At this stage, did Mr. Toure, Mr. Sise, excuse me, uh, give any other suggestion apart from this suggestion to create a bottleneck? No, sir, he did not. As far as I can recall, he, he did not. Uh, proceed, please. Yes, sir. So uh, after the death of Korosise, um, I came to learn that the NIA had also conducted an investigation, an independent investigation. Neither myself nor the uh, Secretary General had instructed them to do so. But it was Sambaba who passed by my office. This was after the return of uh, Hechi uh, Yai Jamme from uh, his overseas trip. And he uh, wanted to give me a brief, a short brief on, uh, on the report. And uh, he told me that, can you remember uh, the discussion that we had with regards to the Libyan money? And I said, yes, yeah. he said, you see, your boss doesn't take advice. Uh, this money uh, being a large amount, I think uh, it must have been somewhere between 200 to 250,000 US dollars. Money from Libya used to come uh, in, uh, in those amounts. We knew that it was uh, uh, an amount, uh, I mean, it was not just a small amount, and, you know, for various reasons. So uh, he told me that that money had been given to Koro to give to a very senior rebel commander. And then uh, he explained to me that this had been going on. Apparently, they had uh, in the past, according to uh, Mr. Sambaba, been taking fuel. They will always take uh, these gallons of fuel um, and ammunition boxes, sometimes ammunition boxes, but little amounts of money and uh, other, other things that are demanded by the rebels to support them. Now, the drop-off point was somewhere outside Sukuta. The roads that are there right now, the tar roads, were not there in 1995. And the, according to Mr. Ba, uh, the rebels used to come in with a gele gele or whatever vehicle, and they used to wait, and then once uh, they meet, then the exchange would be made. But this time, because the money was a significant amount, it was given to Mr. Usman Korosise. Now, the DG NIA at the time was saying, look, he's not ruling out an accident, he's not ruling out, uh, but, he did tell me that he wanted to speak to one of the soldiers whom they had established was there, and this was Tumbul Tamba. So he promised that once he uh, gives the report to uh, President Jamme, he would keep me posted. Now, some days later, um, I met with uh, DG, he had not got back to me, and I asked him, uh, but how about what we discussed? And he said, well, you know your man. He just took the report and then placed it and then told me thank you. And that was it, end of story. And uh, uh, how about, did, at this stage, did Mr. Cisse 
support any activity with the Gaza mass rebels? Well, I cannot say that he did support any activities with the Kasamas rebels. I'm not aware of that. I'm just aware of the conversation that we had in uh, Jame's office and then the subsequent report that uh, Sambaba uh, gave me. But what I can tell you is that um, apart from the three of us that were there, myself with Jame, myself, Sambaba, and uh, Korosise, nobody else was aware of this fact. Um, Jame didn't trust uh, Kababajo enough to uh, bring him in on, uh, on certain things, and neither Yankubatue. So I am quite sure that maybe they're hearing this for the first time if they're watching. Uh, we received evidence that on that fateful night, after you returned from the airport having seen Jame off, you went to Yankubature's house <coughs> and together with soldiers from the Gambia National Army, yourself, Captain Yankubature, Ed Peter Singate, Alaji Kanyi, BK Jata, and a few other soldiers you executed, you assassinated Yankubature, I'm sorry, uh, Mr. Usman Kodesise took him and his Mercedes Benz to Jambur, staged an accident, incinerated the vehicle, and uh, there you have it. Mm -hmm. The rest is history. The chart remains were subsequently rec rec recovered. What do you say to that ac accusation? Well, sir, I say there are so many things wrong with that narration of events. And if we go through the evidence, I'll be able to point that out to you. But we would go through the evidence. Yes, sir. Uh, the question now is, do you accept that you participated in that assassination, or do you deny participation at all? I completely deny, sir. Okay, okay then uh, we would have to go through the evidence and uh, see uh, what it says. What was your relationship like with Mr. Usman Korosise just was, before <coughs> his death? He was my colleague. Uh, we had uh, a good relationship, actually. Would you say that your relationship was cordial, friendly? You see, um, one thing that uh, occurred shortly after uh, his appointment he informed me that uh, his father was Alaji Seni Sisi. Alaji Seni Sisi happened to be my headmaster in primary school. And he had looked after me and my younger brother and my younger sisters during the time that we were there. And so once we established that connection, even though we didn't make it public, because sometimes in a group you don't uh, show people how close you are to others uh, for, for, for obvious reasons, uh, but we, we had that good relationship. And of course, uh, with such a good relationship, Mr. Korosise would not have any reason to characterize it differently. I believe so, yes, sir. Uh, the commission has received evidence uh, that you were, in fact, quite envious <coughs> of Mr. Koro Sise, and uh, that was a result, that was a reason why you hated him and wanted him dead. And uh, let, me, let me read out uh, from the statements of the, one of our witnesses. And this is what he had to say. Uh, question. And at this stage, what was the power dynamics like in Yaya Jame's government, especially members of the council or cabinet for that matter? And the witness answered, well, if you're calling the council, the council uh, were still seen as the upper echelon. Uh, that is chairman, vice chairman, interior, local government minister. Uh, and th th those were the men in uniforms. Uh, 
than the civilians. But in responsibility, Usman Kurosise was becoming more closer to the chairman than the others. Was that read favorably, question rather, was that read favorably by those who you called the others? And he answered, I know it would not be favorable to Edward Singate. He did not want anybody to be between him and the president. And then question, do you know how Edward Singate viewed the relationship between Yaya Jame and Kurusise at the time? And he answered, I, I was telling you, they got very close because Yaya Jame had high esteem for Kurusise and getting always at his office for advices or for any other things that he may need him. But he was most of the time with Yaya Jame. And, and jealous, I believe. It was, the ja it was then that jealousy uh, start rising from Edward Singate. Jealousy against who? Question answered against Usman Kurusise, as I told you. Edward would not want anybody to be between him and President Jame. And question, and your testimony is that Edward Singate was jealous of Usman Kurusise because he was increasingly getting closer to Jame. Answer, that is correct. Would this be a false description of the situation at the time? Well, sir, I can. I will give you an answer, and then I will. I will. I will point to a reason. First of all, this testimony is completely false. But then I would like to point to the reason now. Everyone here can recall Yahya Jame saying time after time after time that he has no friend, and he has no advisers. You see, only I if. Yes, just a moment. Are you suggesting that we should believe everything that Yaya Jame said? Well, with regards to his friends and advisors, I believe that the thing speaks for itself. Oh. He has proven time and time again that he has no friend, that he has no advice. Everyone who thinks that you are close to Jame has paid the price. Yes, but doesn't... But isn't it also the case that in spite of all that, people tried to get close to him? And he also tried to bring people closer to him. It doesn't necessarily mean that because uh, at the end of the day, he would fall out with those people. I mean, nonetheless, he still brought people closer to him. Isn't that the case? Isn't that the truth? What I do know is that if he needs something from you, you will be the star of the month. As soon as that need goes... Was Koro a rising star in Yaya Jame's cabinet? What I will say was that Koro was our finance minister. We relied on his expertise to keep the economy going. Was he a star in that cabinet? Everyone was a star. Was he regarded highly? Everyone was regarded highly as far was as I Was he regarded over and above his peers in cabinet? By who? Jame. I would not know that. You have to ask Jame that. But Jame is not available here. You are here. You are an observer of what was happening. Would you say that Koro was regarded highly in cabinet well, above e others? Even if he was, Jame did not show that. So I cannot answer for Jame. So you believe that that was not the case? He was not regarded? He was not viewed as a rising star in that cabinet? What I do know is that he was important and we all relied on him to ensure that we kept the economy afloat. He was a very important part of the team. So you are telling us, therefore, that uh, his position was not one you would be envious of. Is that what you're suggesting? Absolutely not. I was once offered finance minister, and I turned it down. So you are not jealous of God? <laughs> For what? No way. Not at all. Did you and Koro have any problems at all? No, sir. I know you said your relationship was cordial. Yes, sir. Very. Was he petrified of you? Was he scared of you? I don't see why. I, I, I don't see why anyone would be petrified of me. I have told you, Mr. Singhata, that whether you know it or not, you had a reputation. And the reputation was one of, I'm sorry, but I have to say it, mm -hmm. it's one of ruthlessness, 
uh, one of being callous. That's, 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 those are the objectives that were used against you at the time. People said you were brutal. Was Mr. Ture, Mr. Cisse, excuse me, scared of you? I don't believe so. If he was, then that fear must have been misconceived. And like I said, once, we, once he had uh, told me uh, who his father was, then we, I mean, we clicked. Our relationship became better. Uh, let's, let's hear what Mr. Cisse told members of his family. May I ask the OV van to play the evidence of uh, Madame Bajen Cisse, please? <laughs> However, it was the child here hospital. May of, May of 1995, I worked in my mom's bed. Uh, hello, could you, I think there is a corruption. You have two, two audios going on at the same time. Could you start it again, please? I asked what was going on. The manager said, I have nothing to worry about. Could you take it again, please? A message to her saying she and had it on nineteen ninety five. Left man Edward said at the time mom's bedroom and Edward found her and then mom came up with a question. Uh you have you have two ODS going on at the same time. Uh, could you kindly take it back to to the to the point you had been given? and play it again without the intervention or the interference of the other audio. Sinati at the time, and Edward Sinati threatened to kill Cora. Could you take it back, please? Who, who was left with Edward Sinati at that time? Who was the vice chair? Could you take it back, please? Could you take it back a little bit? Could you take it back, please? Could you take it back, please? Sorry, Council, we are not hearing. We are not hearing. Are not hearing. Uh, uh, the, the problem, uh, Obi-Wan, obi Mr. Singate, in, 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 stop it, please. In spite of the corruption, uh, I think you've heard the gist of it. Yaba uh, Sise, sister of uh, Mr. Usman Koro Sise, said Koro complained to his mother that he had an argument with you and you threatened to kill him. Koro was worried at that time that you would kill him. What do you say to that? So I say that that is not true. I did not argue with Koro, and I did not threaten to kill him. Uh, 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 Mr. Singate, at the time, there was a rumor in town, very rife rumor, and I underline rumor, that the council was not happy with information that Mr. Osman Koro Sise was planning to bring out as part of the budget speech. And he was afraid. Is there any credence to that, or that is also a lie? Sir, uh, there is no truth to that rumor. You see, um, the budget speech is not written by one person. Uh, it is written, drafted uh, by the staff, and then given to uh, the minister who approves it. And then copies are sent to State House. You see, there is nothing that would have appeared in the budget speech that we would not have known beforehand. It's, it's, it's not possible. The question yes, sir. is not 
that uh, there was something mm -hmm. to be written in it that would have been a surprise to you. The rumor in town was that Mr. Cisse wanted to disclose certain information and members of the council would not have it. So what I can tell you is that there was no information that the council was hiding at the time. And therefore, Usman Kurosise would not have had any information to disclose. How, how about the Libya money? Was the council happy that the Libya money was disclosed? That money that was going to go to the rebels in Kazamas? That money did not belong to the Gambia government. We were just the conduit. We were just uh, the, uh, the used to pass on that money to those uh, it was meant for. But that is your opinion, isn't it? No, but that is exactly what we were told by Jamie, that this money is for the Kasamas rebels. Uh, but that is what you're telling us now. But that is what I was told. We were told. He was told. Exactly. Yes, but sir. Uh, what if, what if that money was meant for Gambia and Jame was diverting it to the Kazamas rebels? Would that be a matter of concern for, for someone like Mr. Usman Kodosi, sir? So if the money was meant for Gambia government, it would not have come through intelligence operatives. It would have come through the right channel to the Gambia government. Well, it could have still come to the right channel to the Gambia government for further transfer elsewhere. Mm -hmm. The fact that the fact that a clandestine channel is used does not necessarily mean uh, that it was not meant for the Gambia government. And I say this, Mr. Singhate, because we have seen through the Jane Commission that five million dollars from the money from Taiwan came through big bags. That is not the right channel of sending money to a government. Nonetheless, sir. Uh, but you agree? No, sir. You, no, you see, you started by speculating and say that it could have been. And so, what I can assure you is that those that brought the money, the, the operatives from the world, Mataba, uh, or uh, under the guise of the Islamic Call Society, brought money for Kasamas and Guinea-Bissau, not for the Gambia on this case. And every time that Libya have sent money for the Gambia government, it has come through the right channels. And uh, 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 Mr. Singhate. Yes, sir. Uh, so far, we've listed two witnesses who have provided motives as to why you would be involved in the murder of Usman Korosise. You dispute both pieces of evidence. We dispute the allegation of jealousy and envy, and you dispute the allegation of threats you have made to Mr. Cisse by reason of an argument you had with him. You dispute both evidence. Sir, uh, really, if I am the type that will kill because of jealousy and envy, or because of a threat, okay, I'm going to kill you, and then I go and kill you. Sir, so I'm not that fickle. I believe that people in society know me to be much better than that. Uh, Mr. Senator, we've Those seen... Those are not motives. We have seen Sena Sabali eliminated from the scene simply on the basis of, or oh, if I call him, he will call another person, and on the basis of that, and nothing more. No, it was much more. It was the violence, Nothing it, was, convincing. it was the violence, it was, but no, don't take just one aspect and then put it on the table. If you want to be fair, put everything on the table. And then, and then you can say in totality, it was not enough to have warranted his arrest. So, and I don't know how you can equate the arrest of, arrest of Sana Sabali and the killing of Kuro Sise. I well, don't. Sana Sabali was not arrested alone and Sadib Haidara. Yes, sir. Died as a result. Yes, sir. Exactly. So here is a death. Here is another death. What I'm trying to say is your point that you are not so fickle that uh, you would not just, on the basis of a threat, just go and carry it out. I am telling you that, well, we have seen it happen. Sana Sabali and Sadibu Haidara were arrested on the basis of spurious allegations 
And by as a result of their conduct, their treatment, sub, uh, Hydra died. Yes, but, but that was a threat to the president. And not that I carried out the threat. I did not threaten Sana Sabali. At no point have I threatened him or Saadi Muhaidara. And I had nothing to do with Saadi Muhaidara's death. Well, you have everything to do, to, to, to do with it. By arresting him on false and trump up charges, you knew he was going to be tortured, but that was the real modus operandi. He died as a result. So what I'm trying to say is that I did not go to mile two and kill Saadi Buhaydara. I am not making that allegation. But, but, but that is exactly what you are trying to equate. No, 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 no. far from it. What but I'm it appears as if that is what you are doing. Okay, let me clarify. I am not suggesting that you authored Saadi Buhaydara's death. Clear? Yes, sir. My proposition to you is that you have something to do with his death by reason of the fact that you knew very well that the modus operandi of the army was you are arrested, you are beaten to nonsense. And you participated in the arrest of Saadi Buhaydara mm -hmm. in the full knowledge that the evidence against him was so spurious, it amounted to nothing. Nonetheless, you went ahead and have him arrested, and the rest is history. What followed is the natural thing. He was beaten, as you expected, Soon thereafter, he died. So you have everything to do with it. So beating and uh, killing are not one and the same. So if what a person dies as a result of beating, <coughs> so that beating would not amount I, to killing? I believe what was explained here by Sana Sabali went way beyond just a mere beating. It went way, way, way beyond that. And it, it, it cannot be equated. Uh, the commission would make its findings on okay, that, so, so I will move on. But not only did Koro complain to his family that he feared you, that you have threatened him, he was also warned to be mindful of you. We have received evidence that Mr. Ibrahim Akambi warned Koro to be very careful of you. What do you say to that? Well, sir, I uh, cannot comment on whatever opinion Ibrahim Akambi has of me. I told this commission that I respect him and he's, uh, he was a professional officer, but I cannot, I cannot comment on something that was said to Usman Koro by a third party. Uh, I, f I appreciate that, uh, yes. but I have to bring out the evidence course, to sir. you to, and allow you to comment. Yes, sir. And, uh, the Mr. Kambi was asked of this question. Sorry, uh, Yabajan was asked this question. Uh, can you tell us what the note said? And she answered, the note I read after Koro, after Koro wrote, read the note itself. So the note said, for Koro to be very careful of Edward Singate, he was very ruthless and dangerous. <coughs> so after, I read that information, Koro took the paper from me and shredded and threw it in the kitchen uh, whilst I was cooking. So this is the impression that colleagues of you who were in the army had of you at the time, that you were dangerous and ruthless, sir, especially with regards to Mr. Usman Koro Sise. What do you say to that? Sir, I would say that that is not a true reflection of the opinion, of the general opinion of me in the military at that time or any time. I wish that you had taken a wider sample to find out whether it was only the victims that felt that I was ruthless and heartless and violent or whether it was general and across the board. Well, I would err on the side of the victims. Those who, you, who have not crossed your line would not definitely be the best barometer to test uh, how you would deal with people. Perhaps the victims would be the better test. But nonetheless, I will just move on and, and talk about the next subject. You told the commission that you were never at Yankugature's house. Yes, sir on the night Kurosisa was murdered? Yes, sir. 
Tell us where you went after you left the airport. I went home. And you remained at home all night? Yes, sir. So you did not leave your house at all? No, sir. This is ironclad alibi. This is what happened. Right. And uh, the evidence before this commission is completely different. The evidence suggests that you were, in fact, in the house of Mr. Yankuba Ture, where the assassination was carried out. You still deny that? Yes, sir, I do. Uh, as, as the acting head of state <coughs> at the time, when you left the airport, you did not leave alone, did you? No, sir, I did not. You must have left with your orderlies and driver. Yes, sir, I did. And they definitely would know where you went. They should, yes. And uh, according to you, you went home. Yes, sir. So they must be the people to have taken you home. Yes, sir. Well, let's hear what your orderlies have to say at the time. Uh, let's listen to one Usman, one Lamin S. Marong. You know him? Yes, sir, I do. He, what was he to you at the time? He was my orderly. So he would know where you went that night? He should have, yes. Yeah. And let's, let me read out his statement, Mr. Chair. Paragraph 31, and I quote, On the issue of the death of Usman Korosise, where I was named, on that day, Chairman Jame was due to travel. However, a guard of honor was not performed because it was raining heavily that day. On our way back from seeing the president off, I was with Bachsamba Jalo and Lamin Fati. Edward Singate asked us to pass by Yankuba Ture's residence. Upon arrival, I opened the car door. He alighted. The statement says aligned, but that's a mistake. Mm -hmm. It should read he alighted. And gave me his briefcase to go home and give it to his wife, Aja. He indicated that he did not need an escort. On our way home, I said to Fati, it's not safe as he is without an oddly. Unquote. Your own oddly <coughs> said you did not go home as you suggest. He dropped you off at Yankuba Ture's house. Is he lying? Well, sir, first of all, uh, it was not raining heavily at the airport. Mr. No, Singate. sir, let, no, we, we have to look at the evidence in totality. We just cannot cherry pick exactly what we want. Uh, I, I will allow you to indulge yourself, but if we, it would be helpful if we focus on the important issues. Obviously, the evidence is that it rained that day, whether it heavily or not so heavily, that's an individual's opinion. But I'll allow you to, 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 to respond to the issues you want to respond to. But let's focus on the most important issues. Please proceed, please. Yes, sir. They, they are all important issues. Yes. Secondly, too, Bachamba Jalo was not my driver at the time. So he could not have been in the car. And thirdly, he would, they would not have dropped me there on that day. If it was any other day, yes, I would have said yes. But as acting president, I would not have risked, first of all, being dropped off alone anywhere, number one. And number two, I would not have risked being dropped off at a place that was going to become a crime scene because I would be linked. So I, I'm, I'm not intelligent, but I'm also not that stupid either. You're telling us you would not be dropped off at a crime scene? Yes, sir. So that was a crime scene, wasn't it? No, but it has uh, been purported to have been a crime scene because you have said that that is where Korosise was killed. You said it. Well, you cannot have it both ways, Mr. Singate. Sir, well, you cannot have it both ways either. None of us can. I am just pointing to one direction. And my direction is your own security guard said he did not drop you at your house. As you claim, he dropped you off at Yankubatu's house. Is he lying? Not that day. I was not dropped off at he, Young Cuba Tourist House that day. Uh, well, he spoke of that particular day. 
is he lying? Sir, I believe he is mistaken. Okay, let's, you did not have only one security guard. True. Correct? Yes, sir. In fact, you had two. Yes, sir. And the other security guard would be Lamin Fati. Yes, sir. And Lamin Fati would obviously know where you went from he, the airport. He, this was not any other day. This was a day when the president was traveling. Correct? Yes, sir. Let's hear what Lamin Fati has to say about where you were taken on that day. Could you kindly play the video, please? Audio, audio, please. Ovi Van, we're not getting any audio. Uh, Mr. Singate, kindly turn off your microphone. some delays. Then we went to the airport. After the president's arrival, or president's departure, we were driving home, turning go to, uh, we were supposed to go to, uh, how do you call it again? Cape House. All at, 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 at traffic light. And then I saw the driver just going on the, on the left, towards Kotu. Then we drive so towards Senegambia, up to the Kotu's house. Then Edward dropped. When Edward, uh, before Edward dropped, when the car stopped, Maron, the bodyguard, normally Edward is always right on the, in the front, and Maron will be sitting back. Then I was sitting this way. He opened the door and saluted him. Thinking that we are all going down, then when Maron saluted him, he said, No, Maron, we are with you can relax. Relax, you go home. We left him there, we went to, we went to the house. That is that one. Then he went to which house? The church house. And which house did you live in that? I live in Chef House. No. Which house did you live in that? Yankuba's house. Yankuba Hill. Two rooms. At the time, what position did he hold, if you could look at was the minister. You, you see your, your second bodyguard. He, he said that, that on that, on that evening, evening, on that, on that night, night, he, he dropped you off at Yankuba Ture's house. He, he too is lying. Uh, what I believe is that he too is grossly mistaken. And let me give you a reason, please. What is clear from these two is firstly, that we left from Cape House. And secondly, is that I handed over my briefcase to Marong and told him to give it to my wife, according to them. You see, if that was the case, then I would have left, have had to have left from the office. Because leaving from my house, I don't carry my briefcase. That is why I'm saying it could not have been that day. But Mr. Singate, yes. I think it is quite clear that one may be mistaken about a briefcase. But it is unlikely to be mistaken as to where you have dropped off the acting head of state on a particular day. You cannot compare the two. Whether you had given them a briefcase and dropping off the acting president in a private house, that is completely different. You still saying that they are mistaken? So what I'm trying to establish is that because of these details that they have so vividly remembered, the issue of the briefcase. It could not have been that day. They must have been mistaken on the date. So you are suggesting, well, uh, that I was not. dropped off at any other day, but not exactly that day that this thing occurred. Yeah. But each of these witnesses were specific on the day. Both of them said they went to the airport and saw of the president. From the airport, they came to Yankuba Ture's house. They are both consistent about that particular point. So when they dropped you off, it's not an issue that they are mistaken about. They are both consistent that it happened after they saw of the president. What do you say to that? 
So what I can say is that I don't doubt that I have been dropped off at Yanko Bature's house, but not on this day. How many times were you dropped off at Yanko Bature's house when you were serving as acting president? As actually, as acting president, I hardly go out. That is a matter of principle. Well, these people say that as acting president, you are dropped off at Yanko Bature's house on this day. Are they lying? Well, sir, if you put it that way, then uh, they never said that as acting president. They just said, on our return from the airport, well, I was dropped off. They, say, they said also that the president left the country. They yes, also sir, said course. you are the vice chairman. Yes. And we all know. This is a matter of public record, it's a matter of public knowledge, it is incontrovertible, it is an established and known fact that you are the acting head of state. Absolutely. I am not disputing that fact. It's and just that you said that they said this and I said they did not. But what I want to point okay, out... put it this way, they implied it. No, they did not imply that I was dropped off. They said I was dropped off. But they implied that you, the acting head of state, was dropped off by them at Yanko Bature's house. Are they lying? Sir, what I can say is that I have been dropped off before, but not this day in particular. They must have been mistaken with the day. Well, they, they particularly, specifically mentioned this day. That would be a lie, according to you, correct? What I can do is categorically deny that fact. Okay, uh, let, us, let us move on. Uh, it, is, it would not be just these two people who have seen you, who have seen you in Yankuba Ture's house on this particular day, on this particular evening. Uh, we have Mr. Ahmed Jangom, who also saw you at Yankuba Ture's house that night. And this is what he had to say. Uh, perhaps uh, before I bring out this fact. OK, uh, let me just go with it. This man said, that they were made to go on patrol. And when they went on patrol, at a point he was tired and he decided to come back to the house. And when he came to the house, what happened? He said, so when I get into the main gate, because if you get into the main gate, you go direct to the garage, and the garage is where our guard room is. So before I reached the garage, Captain Edward Singate came outside and stood near the flowers. He was smoking, and then I complimented him. I said, good evening, sir. He said, yes, good. Good evening. How are you? And he responded, fine, sir. And then he was asked, and what was his condition when you saw him? He responded, well, he was putting on American camo, but the uniform is wet. What is American camo? It is an American uniform. We call it American camouflage. That is why we said American camo. <coughs> and you said it was in which condition? He answered, it was wet. Then he was asked, did you see his shoes? <coughs> yes, I saw his shoes. In what condition were they? They were. This is a mistake. It says uh, molds on his shoes, but it meant to say mud on his shoes. This is what Mr. Jangam said. He said he saw you in Yankuba Ture's house. Is he also lying? So the person he saw was smoking. I don't smoke. He said that my uniform was wet at night, a dark camouflage uniform that is wet at, at night, you cannot tell. And in the dark, you cannot determine whether my boots were muddy or not. He never said it was dark. But it's at night, was it not? But you are assuming 
that well, it was dark. At night, if I was dropped off at night, I cannot assume that the sun would be out. Uh, well, my, uh, this is the house of a minister of state. But I was not inside. Yes. I was outside, according to him. Allow me to land. Yes, sir. You would imagine that there would be lights, and that the lights would not be limited to inside the house. Well, sir, if you were there, I'm, I'm sure Jangom did not say that, or are you assuming on his behalf as well? No, I'm not assuming. I am just responding to your own assumption. You are suggesting that it was dark. And I wonder how you knew it was dark. You must have been there. No, you said that it was light. You could not have been there, would you? No. I'm, exactly. I am telling you that this is a minister's home. One would expect that there would be light in the home. One would expect that. Expect? Yes. So, anyway, what I can say... Except if you are there and you want to tell us that you know as a matter of fact that the place was dark. What I can tell you is that Jangom did not see me there on that day. Not only Jangom mm -hmm. saw you there. Another witness also saw you there. And let's play the video of Mr. Lamindur, who was Yankubature's driver. Mr. 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 there a problem uh, with the video um, I want this portion to be played the portion where the witness said uh, he saw Mr. Edward Singate at the house of Mr. Yankubature uh, Mr. Chair perhaps I should just proceed and uh, one of my uh, colleagues would go to the OV van and inquire as to what is the problem with that video so that it could, it could be sorted out with your permission. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes, I'll go to evacuation. It's okay. Uh, Mr. Singate, we will come back to this. All right? Uh, and uh, perhaps I will take a step backwards. People, the video is fine. Is that so? Okay, play it. Sagar, perhaps you can play it. Kind of video, yes. Video. It, it, it appears that uh, that is not the case. The video is not ready. So um, uh, Sagar Jahate Thomas would, uh, oh, Sagar Thomas Jahate. I'm sorry, Sagar. I always bungle it. I'm so terribly sorry. Um, Sagar would uh, go out to the OV van and sort it out. In the meantime, we would proceed. Perhaps let me take you a step backwards. Uh, It is suggested that prior to Yaya Jame's departure on that day, strange things happened at the 
airport. While Siaya Jame was on the steps leading into the plane, he stopped, beckoned on you, and he had a conversation with you. Is that correct? Well, I cannot re recall exactly, but what I do know on several occasions, as he has uh, uh, been on his way out, whether he's been on the steps or before he alights the steps, he has called me aside and then uh, had a discussion with me. On this particular occasion, the evidence is that it happened twice. Even just before he entered the plane, he asked you to come again and you had another conversation. Good. So what is strange about the president telling, uh, calling his vice and then talking to him before he goes into a flight? The strange thing, Mr. Singata, is that those who are present are people who've been present during many, many departures of the president or the, or the head of state, and they have never seen such a thing happening. Well, sir, what I can say is that if every time the president travels or President Jame has traveled and he calls somebody to talk to them, uh, somebody dies, then there will be hardly anybody left because he does it regularly. And people see him on TV calling people aside and talking to them, uh, whether it is the vice president, whether it is a minister, whether it is one of the security th uh, chiefs. If he has got something to discuss for you to follow up or do, he will call you. But that has got nothing to do with, uh, with anything. Uh, this is right just before he entered the plane. He called on someone in your person to discuss issues before he went in, and that must be quite important, isn't it? Well, sir, there were many important things happening at the time. Uh, yes, and therefore this one would be quite important, wouldn't it? Well, sir, what I do recall is that we had the Constitutional Review Commission. We had decrees which were being drafted. We had the NCC report that uh, we believe that some, some things needed to be uh, uh, implemented. So they, they, they were the, um, um, uh, the projects also that needed to be monitored. And obviously, as head of state, he wants to make sure that things go on normally in his absence. And it's been alleged by witnesses that, uh, including in that list, is the planned assassination of Usman Kurosise, which, according to the witnesses, was to be executed and supervised by you. Do you deny that? Of course, sir. And I will implore you to bring any witness who can tell you exactly what was said on that day, apart from just seeing me and Jame talk. I do not suggest that any witness had what was discussed. Sure. I can only tell you what the suggestion is. Well, the, the suggestion, suggestion is that this consultation was so abnormal that the killing of Usman Kurosise was not a coincidence. It wasn't an accident as was reported by your government. Well, sir, that is highly unfair uh, because Yai Jame has a habit of consulting anyone at any time and has done so on several occasions before departing. I, in fact, I'm sure if you investigate further, there have even been instances when he has even gone on board his flight and then called somebody for consultation. Please look into that uh, and see if somebody has died as a result. You see, but when it happens and, and somebody as important as his own finance minister dies, then it becomes an important issue. It gives nobody the right to make a link that is not there, sir. Uh, let's go back to the issue, uh, to the video of Mr. Lamindur, please. Yes, sir. On which main road are you referring to? Akobe Silaba Jumalema, Olam Silaba Nimbara na Melgen. This is the main uh, road that uh, main from the main uh, from the gate. That's the road that goes towards and, uh, the, the training school, where you bend to, to go to the training school. So we came from the back gate and then we went on to the main road. From where you were, 
Could you see what was happening around the camp? I, 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 think, I think they are playing from the wrong time, time stamp. Uh, we, want to, we want the portion where the witness is talking about Mr. Yankubature's house. We will come back to this video. I think they are having problems. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Singate, uh, now let's, let me just recap and put this in context, right? Uh, we have covered a bit of motive. We've established or we've presented you with evidence suggesting that you had a bad relationship with Koro. We presented evidence suggesting. I'm using my words carefully. Yes. I'm saying suggesting. Mm -hmm. It's for the commission to, uh, to draw conclusions. Mm -hmm. I've led evidence suggesting uh, that you were envious of Koro because of the position he held at the time. He was getting closer to Jame. Let evidence to show that just before Jame's departure, you had unusual conversations with him on the staircase of the, of, of the play. Your defense to this accusation is that you have an alibi. You, are, you could not have committed the crime because you were not there, you were in your home. I have brought out evidence from Lamin Fati, who was with you at the time. He said he dropped you off at Yankubature's house. Your other security guard, uh, Lamin Marong, also claimed that he dropped you at Yankubature's house. We've had the evidence of Ahmed Jangom. He also said that he saw you at Yankubature's house. Now we would hear from Lamindur later who the evidence as we know it suggests that you are also at Yankubature's house. I will come back to this and let us move on to other issues at the moment. We've been told that, in fact, Yankubature's house was the site of the murder. And prior to the execution, Yankuba's family members were extracted from his house in Kersering area and taken to your house. And how is it called? Is it Cape House? What do you say to that? Well, sir, the wives uh, get together all the time. Um, I cannot recall specifically on this date I went to the airport, and when I c uh, came back, I went into my room. Did you remember seeing the wives at your house? It's been 25 years. Um, I cannot, but I do know that they do come to the house. This would have been a special night, wouldn't it, Mr. Sinate? This was a night when you, among other things, became acting president. It was not like every other night. Sir, becoming acting president is not a matter of celebration. The president travels and hands over the country and has done it before several times. It doesn't mean that you become president. Right. And so th th that, th that is not an indication that everything that happened because I became acting president, you know, is, uh, I mean, is a special occasion. It's got nothing to do with that. Right. So. Right. How often did you uh, travel at the time? Uh, I cannot recall. In fact, he rarely traveled at the time, 1995. Yaya Jame rarely traveled. I know I did most of the traveling. Uh, exactly. So it wasn't entirely correct when you said that it happened frequently. It happened all the time. No. That is far from what obtained at the time. Yaya Jame rarely traveled during 1995. 
please uh, uh, don't take me out of context. What I'm saying is that this issue of becoming acting president during the time of my uh, uh, time, well, uh, my uh, time as uh, vice head of state, did did happen quite a number of times. I cannot re recall how many times. This would have probably been the first. No, I don't believe so. Sana Sabali was removed in January. Yes, sir. No, was it January or February? February. Yes, sir. You see? And here we were in June. Mm -hmm. You, you were given the reins of uh, acting president. So how many times it would have happened between February, end of February, 27 February, and uh, 23rd June, how many times do you think it happened? I cannot recall. I am not sure. Would I be wrong to suggest that this was the first? I am not sure whether you are wrong. I think we can dig out the records and find out. Uh, the commission would do that. But, but even if it was the first, like I said, it you would have been memorable, wouldn't it? Uh -huh. Because it was the first time you served as acting head of state. Wouldn't that be memorable, Mr. Sinati? And, and why? You were just holding the fort while the president has gone. But an important fort for that matter. Uh, sir, if you were left at the house, uh, I mean, to babysit, and then, uh, it, I mean, to me, I mean, it's not a big deal. And more significantly, a night that the finance minister, one of Gambia's brightest at the time, would be so brutally murdered, that, that would be quite important, wouldn't it? So, is it important because I was acting president, or is it imp important because uh, the minister uh, died that night? Which was, what is the point that you are trying to make? My point is both are so significant, both are so important, that this was such a memorable moment. You can't just forget it like that, would you? Sir, no matter how memorable a moment is, after 25 years, your memory does tend to fade. And let's face it, I am human. I'm not superhuman. You want to forget because this was such a terrible crime. Is yes. that a question? Oh, no. Yes, it is a question. No, I don't want to forget anything. All right. Okay, let's proceed. You deny, do you, that the wives were asked to come to your house? Well, sir, that I, night? I, I did not ask the wives to come to my house on that night or any night. That was not something for me to do. Do you deny that the wives or young Kuba's family was brought to your house in order to clear the scene, to set the stage for the assassination? That one I deny, yes. Well, all the witnesses, all the witnesses, I will iterate, Jangom Sise said the families, Yankuba's family, were brought to your house. Ensa Mendi, Yankuba's security guard, who's oddly also said that the family were taken to your house. The driver, Lamindur, said the family was taken to your house. The house was practically, it was empty. Is that also false? Well, sir, it was not my house, so I would not know whether it was empty or not. And the guards were told to go on a patrol on the basis of a lie that Gambia was being attacked from the sea, they should go and patrol. That too is a lie. Sir, at no one time was anybody informed that Gambia is being attacked from the sea. What I do recall is that there were incidents of uh, these uh, fishing boats, these canoes. Uh, please go ahead, please go ahead. Incidents of canoes coming ashore along Fajara, and this was reported by civilians on several occasions. It was not known whether they were smuggling goods, it was not known whether people were coming in, it was not known whether there were arms 
that were being brought, brought in. So there was no information that Gambia was being attacked from the sea. Uh, if, even if that were to be the case, the response would not be to withdraw the guards of uh, one of the state ministers, would it? Well, sir, what I do know from the evidence that has been uh, well given to this uh, commission is that one of the witnesses had told this commission that Yanko Bature was at State House uh, prior. Could you, could you kindly answer to my question? You would have the chance to delve into that issue you want to talk about. But could you just answer my question first? That is what I'm trying to answer. But what has it got to do with Yanko Bature being at State House? My question is, in such an eventuality, Kenos unlawfully or whatever uh, mooring at Fajara, whether they carry arms or not, the surveillance of that or a response to that would not be or ought not to be from security guards who are stationed at the house of a minister. That is what I'm trying to explain, if you had allowed me. All right, proceed then. Yes. So what I do understand is that Yankuba was at State House, and uh, this issue uh, was uh, discussed. It had been discussed prior. Now, during the president's uh, trips, uh, the state guards are normally put on standby. And so being in Fajara, or being uh, in uh, Kersering, it would not be unusual if the president had used his unorthodox means of uh, tackling certain things, had asked Yankuba to deploy his guards to go and see if these allegations were true. Mr. Sinhate, yes, are you sir. serious? Why not? Are you really serious? Yes, sir, I am. You mean that Yaya Jame may have to withdraw Yankuba's guards and leave Yankuba unattended, and for those guards to go to the beach and patrol to see whether there are boats that are landing there? That Absolutely. You want us to believe that, Mr. Singhat? Sir, if but you don't want to believe me, but we did, that is your choice. Wouldn't that be preposterous? Wouldn't that be so outrageous that it would be beyond belief? How many outrageous things has Jame done in the past? Uh, preposterous and outrageous, isn't there a and you only unit? believe when you see it. Isn't there a marine unit? Yes, there is. And what is the job of the marine unit? Yeah, the marine unit is, uh, the, uh, the role is to protect our territorial waters. Uh, wouldn't that include detecting and taking care of those boats you just talked about? Yes, but remember, it uh, takes a lot. answer no, the question. No, please, if you don't allow me, you would not understand. You see, you have a certain perception. Mm -hmm. And if you don't allow me to explain, uh, Mr. you Mr. Senator, get please me. don't hide behind if you don't allow me. I have given you every latitude to answer every question, including this one. I'll give you every room to answer the question. This is a question that required a yes or no answer. If you want to exp expansiate, by all means, go ahead. But you can easily answer this by yes or no. I, I don't want us to waste time just dilly-dallying and going into issues that are extraneous. But go ahead and answer. Wouldn't that have been a responsibility of the marine unit to detect and address this particular problem? Ordinarily, yes. However, it takes a lot of fuel to move those marine vessels. Okay, and uh, for the guards at Yankuba's house? Yes. Did you move them by vessel? I didn't move them. Were they moved by Jame by vessel? <laughs> How can you move soldiers by vessel on land? In fact, do you realize that Ahmed Jangom said that they were sent on patrol without their weapons? But S. Amendi said that they carried their weapons. Clearly, these were two different groups. So don't pick one over the other. I am telling you that one of the groups suggested they even went without weapons. But S. Amendi clearly told the commission they had their weapons. 
that might very well be true. So why are but, you picking but one? No, what I am trying to show here, Mr. Singate, is yes, that sir. if one of the groups could go, could be instructed to go without weapons, then it must have been assessed that there was no significant threat. Sir, as far as I know, they were not going to go to neutralize a threat. They were going to observe whether the uh, information that had been given was actually true. And, and it was so important to do that, to the extent that Yankuba's guards were withdrawn. If at all weapons were being brought in, it would have been important for us to know, even if goods were just being smuggled in or out, it would have been important for us to know. But Ibujalo lived at Fajara. He would have definitely been much closer to the beach, but his guards were not withdrawn. Ibujalo was out of the country. Precisely, that makes it even a whole lot easier, because the person to guard and protect was not in the country. It would have just been much more feasible to get his guards to just go down the beach and patrol. But then who do you contact for that? He was not there. How could he give instructions to his guards? So for the army to contact its guards, they have to go through the principal. They have to go through you to contact the guards. They have to go through you to contact you, uh, the guards of Yom Kuba Ture. The army has its established means of communication. Yes, absolutely. But if you want to withdraw my guards, you come through me. Uh, but, Mr. Singate, couldn't the army have, in fact, deployed the marine unit by car to come down to Fajara? Couldn't that have taken place? So, when this issue was being discussed between Yankuba and uh, the then head of state, I was not privy to it. Uh, I, I just want to put it to you, Mr. Singate that this story that you are giving us is just intended, really, to cover up the main purpose of the removal of the guards. It was all intended to clear the scene so that this heinous crime could be committed away from the peering eyes of the guards. That is the reason why all these guards and the family members were removed from Yankuba's house. Do you so, deny that? Of course, I completely deny that. And the fact that, the fact that Yankuba Ture and Yaya Jame had a discussion about removing Yankuba's guards to get them to go and patrol, in fact, reinforces the idea, the theory, the notion that Yaya Jame, yourself, and Yankuba Ture were complicit in this murder because what it says is that Yaya Jame agreed for the removal of the guards in order to pave the way for the, for, for, for the scene to be suitable for the commission of this crime. You deny that? Sir, I believe that Yankuba would have been completely out of his mind to allow such a crime to be conducted or, or to be done in his house. Well, I cannot, that is inconceivable. He was out of his mind to allow his guards, all of them, to be taken away, to go all the way to the beach to just patrol for nothing. I, I don't think you can equate the two. Your guards go temporarily for a couple of hours to go and verify information and the killing of somebody in your own house. I don't think that in anyone's right frame of mind you can compare these two things. Mr. Singate, all the guards claim that they were sent on a wild goose chase. They were all sent to go and look for something that did not exist. They were hoodwinked. What do you say to that? I say that is not correct. Let's hear Lamindur and uh, hear what he says. Akofoy hakimu sibula lulu, lulu me yalam ko, mengu kaya ngu maturu la bunga kanta, inata isamba kataga, kanta rula karakotel. Yes, I remember. Yes, I remember. Was that something that occurred um, often or not? Akofoy kake wumu kule ti mengu kake wadi wadi bang fulung wulundro neng akita. Oh, nena mangke gasol kara patrola. That never happened for the guards to go on patrol. 
And is that why you recall this particular um, day? Uh, Mr. Chair, I think we are having a problem here. Uh, we are getting images from Lamindu, from uh, Jangom, but the audio is the interrogation of Lamindur. Uh, so the OV van should uh, sort this out. In the meantime, perhaps we can take a short break, another perhaps 30 minutes break. Uh, we're doing it by two hours, I think, and uh, hope that by the time we return, we would sort it out. But if that is not going to happen, and uh, you are hearing uh, the audio, and you warn us all, that we listen to the audio, forget about the video, we, uh, then you get the same result. Uh, uh, Mr. Chair, what I am trying to avoid is a legal challenge suggesting that uh, the information that came out was not accurate. Sir, so, um, um, is the audio inaccurate? Um, uh, sir, uh, no. Maybe. Uh, the audio may be linked to it, the witness. It's, it's, it's just a bit convoluted. Sir, can I maybe yes, please, just state for the record, Mr. Chairman, I have heard the audio, and I have heard that uh, what Nurcham, sorry, uh, Lamindur has said that he saw me at the house, and that is being played despite the fact that the video is not being played. So I will not challenge what, uh, 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 well, mount a legal challenge just because an audio has been played and the video has not come out. Put that on the record for me, sir. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Singate, for that. Uh, Mr. Then I'll just proceed on this point. Mr. Chair, if you want us to take a break at any point in time, please let me know. Um, would you want that um, uh, a 10-minute break, a 15-minute break? Yes, I think, I, I think I just want us not to have I think a long break and then come back with the same or 15 problem. minutes break, 15 minutes break, but until I finish with this point. Splendid. Yes, thank please you very much. So, uh, Mr. Singate, then back to the issue of your alibi. You have heard Lamindur say that he saw you at the house, at Yankuba Ture's house. Yes, sir. On that night. What do you say to that? Sir, I say it was not that night. Well, Lamindur said it was that night. It could not have been that night. Ahmed Jangom said he saw you there that night. You deny it. Mm -hmm. Your oddly, Lamin Fati said he dropped you at that house that night. You denied it. Mm -hmm. Your other oddly, Lamin Marong said he dropped you in that house that night. Yankuba Tue's driver, Lamindur said he saw you in that house that night. You still deny that? Yes, sir. They are mistaken. Not that night. Okay. Two of your guards and two of Yankuba Ture's staff all saw you there that night. You still deny it? Sir, you can repeat it a hundred times. I still maintain it was not that night. Well, I would ask it as many times yes, as sir, I need to. Yes, sir. Of course. I, and I will answer as many times, too. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Uh, we, we, we have now struck an understanding. Yes, sir. Uh, do you believe that these four people have any reason to lie against you? Well, sir, I don't know Ahmed Jangom uh, to that extent. Uh, Lamendur, I don't believe so at all. My uh, two former orderlies did not leave the house under favorable conditions. Uh, yes, I mean, definitely so. But anyway, sir, I don't want to point to any excuse. I will give you my side of the story as wholeheartedly as possible. And I will not criticize anyone else with their evidence. So whether they have a reason or not, really, sir, it, 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 uh, it, is, it is insignificant to me. You accept you are there? <laughs> no, sir. <laughs> Again, no. Oh, are you trying to trip me up? Uh, no, sir, I was not there at that house on that day. Alaji Kanye. Yes, sir. He testified. Yes, sir. That not only was he there with you, he testified that himself, you, Yankuba Ture, your brother Peter, and others 
committed the heinous crime. Let's hear what Kanye had to say. Clear the video, please. Like can you please? I, I have been told that that video is not ready yet. Mr. Chair, we take a short break, 15 minutes. Oh, um, uh, don't come back. I'm sorry, we come back at St. Uh, at 5 o'clock. Yes, Mr. Right? Chair. How do they say that in Thank Chinese? <laughs> 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 that would be trouble. 